good morning, but good afternoon, everyone. Um, let, let's hope that more people find this session interesting and, and come in. Um, from a 5G perspective, um, see, 5G has dominated uh, a lot of the headlines uh, from the telco and technology world in the recent years. Uh, you know, it promises increased speeds, it promises low latency, greater bandwidth, and it also promises to reduce the digital divide uh, within, within a country. Uh, it has got multiple use cases, uh, Internet of Things, uh, powers artificial intelligence, precision robotics, uh, AR, so many use cases, uh, private 5G networks, uh, FWA, and, and we'll hear about some of these. Um, you know, the, the uh, challenges uh, in a country like India are also manifold. Challenges with legacy infrastructure, challenges with the rollout, challenges, challenges with getting the required ROI on your investment, uh, and also challenges for entrepreneurs here in terms of getting to a point where there is a defined ecosystem of collaboration where they can actually develop um, and thrive uh, on, on the 5G app side. Uh, today, if you look at the world, uh, there are about 15 to 20 percent of the people around the world on 5G. That number is going to go and explode uh, and be more than 50 percent of people on 5G, let's say, in the next five years. Um, so with that kind of a context, let me set, set the, uh, you know, the panel up. We're going to do this in two rounds. Uh, the first round is a bit of a shorter round. Uh, where we want to talk about the current deployment of 5G, the current use cases and the current challenges. Uh, we'll then do a slightly longer round on what is the future and how can people like the entrepreneurs present here uh, be an integral part of the journey and, and find uh, you know, more business opportunities from a 5G perspective. Um, so let me kick it off. Uh, I don't know, uh, most people actually understand 5G uh, but, uh, you know, just to s get everyone on the same page, I wanted to request Umang from Ericsson to talk to us about what actually is 5G um, and, you know, about different CapEx cycles. Just a little bit of an intro on, on what 5G is. Umang. Thanks, Umit. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, okay, let's talk about 5G. You know, when we talk about 5G from Ericsson parlance, we really get into the depth of technology. But I'll try and keep simple. 5G is a very simple thing. So, few uh, few pointers on 5G. You know. One thing which comes to my mind straight away from 5G is speed. With 5G, we are able to deliver up to you know 25 to 30 gigabits of download, 5 to 8 gigabits of uplink speed at a single user level. So that's what 5G delivers today. At that, too, if I look at India spectrum, we can deliver the same in India also. So that's number one of 5G. Number two, after speed comes, let me talk something around technology. You know, I can get into depth of the technology, but reality, uh, 5G simplified the overall wireless technology from a 4G person. And you know, when we come to 6G, we will say 6G is more simpler as compared to 5G. But having said that, 5G simplified the technology. And the reason we call it is, uh, in 4G, there was a lot of signaling information which was being continuously transmitted. What happened in 5G? The continuous transmission of signaling was reduced to limited transmission based on the traffic. So, which indirectly means 5G made the network and the technology more sustainable because uh, the less transmission is more energy saving for you. So, 5G brings more sustainability. Right. The moment we bring sustainable and a better efficient thing, we talk about uh, security. So, security is the third pillar of 5G. 5G brings you more secure connectivity and connectivity right from authentication, you know, authentication of a user, authentication of a service, classification of a service as well as monetization aspect. It brings a lot of value to it for the uh, subscribers, industries. So third piece is security. The moment I touch on industries, you know, the fourth thing comes, how do you expand it in terms of device? So we have always been talking about smartphones in our life, right? Humans have been connected by smartphones. But 5G will bring, bring smart connectivity, meaning that from smartphones of the world, we will come to the smart devices of the world. So what we are expecting 5G will bring is not only connecting the humans, which practically around the world we are 90% connected. 
from a human point of view. We are talking about machines, we are talking about cars, we are talking about new devices, electricity meters, energy meters, robots, you know, aeroplanes being talked about, communication happening at the flights level. So, a lot of new things are going to come. So, that is the another piece of 5G which is smart connectivity. Then the last piece which comes is, how do we enhance the experience? What more can we bring? And that was called service differentiator. Right? In that what we are looking at is, you know, people sitting in this room, when you come here, you don't get good speed. Can we give you a service differentiator here? Can we give a service differentiator to, to an industry? How can we connect cars until unless there is a dedicated pipe for them? How can we talk to robots in the same language? How can we talk about holograms when they don't have a service differentiator? You know, there we talk about latencies of the world, more or more and more technical terms into it. To sum it up, you know, we classify 5G into 5S. Speed, security, sustainable, smart devices and service differentiator. Great. Thank you, Mom. Uh, from the technology, let us actually uh, learn a little bit about what has happened in the 5G world in terms of rollout. I pass on the baton to Arun from Nokia to talk about 5G rollout in the recent years and what have been the learnings, uh, especially for entrepreneurs like you. Thanks, Sumit. So, good afternoon all. So, um, as Sumit already mentioned, we have now almost 20 percent of the subscribers on uh, 5G worldwide. That's about uh, 1.5 billion. And uh, the rollout of 5G perhaps saw the fastest adoption, uh, adoption of this technology as compared to the earlier technologies. And let's come to India. The uh, rollout of the, okay, the, the worldwide rollout started in 2019, but in India we started in uh, 2022. And just in a matter of uh, one and a half years, we have seen tremendous adoption and something like 1.5 million subscribers already on 5G today. And uh, what uh, this has done is that uh, one of the things that is really visible for us is the rapid deployment across the country. In fact, I read an article recently that the latest count is uh, 740 districts of India already covered with 5G. That's, I think, more than 80 percent of the country. So, I think that uh, has been very heartening and uh, it, it shows, you know, that the operators and the ecosystem in India is ready to scale. The, uh, what we've seen as an outcome of that is the tremendous increase in speeds. So, just uh, two years ago, you know, as part of the UCLA uh, uh, median speeds ranking. India was, you know, way beyond, you know, 118th or 120th position. And uh, thanks to 5G, you know, the, the median speed from something like less than 50 Mbps has, you know, gone to 50 Mbps. And uh, the latest statistics for January shows that we are at 100 Mbps. We are in the top 20 with uh, the average median speeds even higher than that of UK and uh, Japan. So, I think that that is uh, you know, a fascinating uptake that uh, we have seen thanks to the 5G technology. Now, you asked about the learnings, um, uh, talking especially from a Nokia point of view, while the worldwide uh, adoption of 5G started in 2019, I think India took a conscious decision to get it, uh, to start it a, a, a bit later. And in hindsight, I think it was a good decision. So, one of the things was that, you know, we had to give enough time to the operators to set up the networks. Uh, there was in between the COVID scare that happened, disrupting briefly the supply chain. And uh, thirdly, the device ecosystem had to be ready. Yeah, so we need to have enough devices. So, I think taking these uh, factors into mind, starting the, the rollout a bit later actually helped us. One other thing that I would like to mention, especially from a Nokia point of view, uh, having a factory locally in India helped us a lot. So, we have a center at Chennai, which is also manufacturing 5G gear. That helped us to get over some of the supply chain issues. We also have uh, global centers that actually take care of managing the operations and maintenance right here in India. That helped a lot. So, I think this would be a learning uh, when we go ahead with the next generation of technology also to have this ecosystem in place in the country. I am sure all of you are on 5G. Just a quick show of hands on 
who all are already on 5G, as we all know. Uh, the a new, uh, it's not a new buzzword, a new thing that we always now are talking about in 5G is private 5G. Uh, and I want to invite uh, my friend Vishy uh, from Tatacom to talk about what is private 5G and what is the future of private 5G in India. Uh, thanks, Omit. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you know, whenever we uh, hear about any G rollout now on 5G now, the focus is always towards how do we connect individuals like each one of us, how do we connect their uh, smartphones uh, in an area where everyone moves around, you know, trying to uh, bring in the con you know, context and the concept of private network, right? So, but then if you look at, uh, say, an enterprise, they have a large factory, uh, say, two square kilometers of factory or a large mine or a large warehouse. The problem typically happens is that uh, not many humans are there which are working there. An interest from an operator to set up a network that will cover everything inside that factory, that mine or that warehouse is low. Their own, because the operator looks at it from a return on investment point of view. If I put a coverage there, how much do I get out of that place? That's what the typical thinking is, right? So private network came about uh, initially in the world primarily with mines and uh, oil rigs where there is absolutely no interest for an operator to set up a network. But then things have graduated much beyond that when 5G started happening in everywhere in the world. The first thing that happened was that uh, like what uh, you, know, you heard uh, from others that uh, 5G is able to promise you a better speed, a better latency, a better performance, better security, etc. So people started looking at 5G to replace various other technologies that are being used inside the campus, inside the factory or inside the mine, say to connect devices there, to automate uh, the production line, to connect robotics that they are using, to connect the vehicles that are flying within the campus. So they wanted to set up a network if possible to connect all of these things. So it went beyond coverage, which was important for a mine or a, uh, an oil rig. It went much beyond coverage to came into being used for mission critical applications within a campus. So you know, people talk about automation using 5G. People talk about getting into industry 4.0 applications uh, using 5G and so on. And that's where the private network comes in. You know, you set up a network private to that particular enterprise, that campus, useful only for those set of equipment or devices or applications that you set up within that campus. And that's where private network uh, comes into. Uh, you know, like, it has, uh, like I said, it has been in existence for a long time, uh, using 4G for mines and oil rigs. Now it is sort of slowly proliferating into manufacturing units, uh, into warehouses, into ports into various other, into sports stadiums. So it is now proliferating into <coughs> lot of other applications, lot of other venues, uh, you know, and, and many countries have started encouraging this because this sort of speeds up the industrial automation, speeds up efficiency uh, within a manufacturing unit or any such operation. So many countries, the governments have come forward, they have set up a spectrum, uh, which is essential for doing a 5G network. Uh, for using uh, in the industrial space. You know, uh, India is also under consideration. Soon we expect we will have spectrum that has been set aside for industrial use. So once we have that, uh, we feel that there will be a lot of industries which will start using 5G private network for, uh, you know, speeding up their automation, speeding up their digital transformation, speeding up their industry 4.0 applications. Right, so that's that's uh, that's what it is about private network. See, let me be honest. Everyone who's sitting up and every one of you wants to make money, but uh, out of out of this as an opportunity. But more so, my friend Jayanta here. So he will tell us how to make 5G more profitable, uh, and is uh, fixed wireless the the answer to making it more profitable? Yeah. Thanks, Sumit. Good afternoon, all. 
So, globally, if you look at it, uh, fixed wireless access, in short form we call it FW, is the most successful use case for 5G. And in the context of India, FW plays a very critical role because if you look at India, right, fixed broadband connectivity is very low. It is at around 11%. So there are around uh, 350 million homes in India and only 35 million homes have fixed broadband. So FWA is a very good way, uh, way to bring connectivity to the unconnected homes and provide fiber-like experience. Now why FWA also is a profitable use case? It is because the wireless infrastructure that has already been rolled up uh, for 5G smartphone, the same wireless infrastructure and the same spectra is used for FWA. So from an operator point of view, there is very little incremental investment required to roll up FWA services. Now the question comes as the 5G smartphone traffic right, uh, picks up, there is going to be contention between uh, for the same spectrum between smartphone traffic and FWA services. The good part is in India, all the most of the operators have also invested in millimeter wave uh, spectra. So as as the sub six spectrum, which is currently being used for 5G smartphone, gets filled up, FWA can be can make use of the millimeter wave uh, spectrum. Right. So so far I have uh, you know given a very rosy and positive picture, but I will also talk a little bit about some of the challenges that need to be overcome to make uh, FWA successful because like I said, you know, it is providing connectivity and uh, broadband services to the entire country and to uh, address the digital divide. FWA is going to play a very important role in our country because we don't have too much of fiber in, in our country today. So the challenge today we have with uh, FWA is with the CP, with the device cost. So there is a lot of technology innovation that is uh, happening today to reduce the cost of the CPE device, right? And to make it truly a plug and play service, right? And with all this technology in innovation that is happening, I believe that FWA will be a very, very successful uh, story in India and address the digital divide that we have currently challenged. Thank you. So you've given everyone one idea on how to make money. Uh, the you know, most of us uh, would know that India is now one of the very few countries in the world that have an indigenous stack uh, on 4G and very soon on 5G as well. Pritam uh, is from Tejas has been involved in creating that India stack. Uh, so my question is uh, not of an opportunity first, but what were the challenges of uh, creating an indigenous stack? especially for a legacy infrastructure like India. Yeah, thanks Sumit. Uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I think any new uh, development that has to happen uh, in deep technology will always say, I mean all of you, probably a lot of you are in entrepreneurs here, you know the teething problems of any company that, uh, that will be, you know, taking on bigger players. So that challenge was always there for even uh, mobile technology in India as well. And more so because mobile technology, you know, be, be 4G or 5G, uh, you know, they are very demanding in terms of uh, the, the kind of quality of service that, that is needed by the users. So the main learning was, you know, one of the biggest challenges, how do you get market access first? and soak your uh, products in the market for long enough uh, so that you, you fine tune it uh, and make it uh, world class uh, you know, especially when these are dominated by uh, you know, a few of my friends uh, here they have been there for in the business for long enough that uh, you know if you want to catch up with that kind of technology you need to have that kind of opportunity right so that is one of the bigger challenges of building the india stack was right? so and, and then the ecosystem, right? Ecosystem of India, be it for manufacturing, uh, you know, 5G or 4G, they are all hardware intensive, uh, you know, uh, industry. The radio access network, 
is is a cutting edge uh, hardware that you need to build. Uh, India did not have a, a, a real uh, manufacturing ecosystem here. When we started, you know, even to make an enclosure for a radio box that you would, would have missed uh, on the road or on the tower, you know, they are very, uh, you know, very intensive uh, mechanical work that needs to be done to make those kind of radios. So those, you know, we have gone through that cycle of building that ecosystem as we grew, right? Uh, obviously, uh, the government help uh, uh, definitely, you know, makes a lot of difference. This is not just for India. Any country, including uh, China or uh, Europe, whoever has built technology like this on their own, uh, you know, we are proud to be one of the few countries, of, I think one of the five countries in the world who has indigenously developed such technology, right? Uh, uh, that, that kind of uh, uh, thing needs a lot of government support and hand-holding. I think that came about in the recent years, uh, which also helped, right? So that uh, is, is basically the bigger challenges that we have faced, uh, mainly to make sure that your product is out there in the market long enough uh, to uh, provide all the you know, high-tech uh, features that you can provide. Right. Thank you. You know, when we go to these corporate retreats, uh, senior guys always ask the question, so how is the Josh? Uh, I'm not going to ask you that. I'm going to ask a different question. Uh, and maybe it's okay to take one or two thoughts. Where is the Josh? Where do you guys see an opportunity in 5G? What are your thoughts? Uh, maybe a couple of them and then we'll move back to the band. Anyone? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Any other Joshila, Joshili here? Yes, sir. Sorry, uh, Shop. Can you give them a mic, please? Have the organizers vanished? No. So, I think. Uh, more so to do with the uh, density, the speed, the security aspect is the key part of it, which uh, makes the industries uh, adopt this 5G technology. So the Josh, I would say, is more on to maybe the uptake might be slow, but still the promise is more in terms of the 5G uh, getting into the industry space uh, and making sure the all the industry photo transformation is being on board on the 5G and it will be productive in terms of overall uh, business angle and standpoint. That's what I think the Josh is. Fantastic. Yeah, globally, I'm talking about. Yeah. So we are all waiting for the Acha time, Aiga. So let's start the discussion on, on that. Oh, there's one. Oh, sorry, please. Can you pass on to the person at the back, please? Hi, my name is Trisha. So 5G plays a very crucial role in healthcare industry, considering uh, now most of the medical equipments are uh, coming up with the automatic robotic surgery, where the doctors perform the procedures or a treatment process virtually. 5G right. plays a very, very crucial role. So the devices have to be connected and it should enable the doctors to perform the surgery virtually anywhere, any part of the world. That's right. what I see by here is a very crucial part. Okay, absolutely. And on that, let me uh, pass it on to Umang. The question is, what is that killer app in 5G that people can develop and, and obviously make money out of? Sumit, you're putting me on a spot. It's a, it's a multi-million dollar question that you asked me now in a simple way. But let, let me try and make it uh, more beneficial for the audience. I think, sir, you brought a very good point about connected uh, vehicles, I would say. So, uh, you, know, you know, in our parlance, when Ericsson talks about it, we talk about people connectivity. I think 
that's more or less done. People are connected today and they are talking about few gigabits of uplink and downlink speed. But there would be more applications coming right from the stage of you know holograms, connected cameras, which people will start using it, which will demand more capacities in downlink, uplink, you know. We have come from an era where we do a lot of download. We can expect our kids to do a lot of upload. And that's what Insta and Facebook are doing. Kids are uploading a lot of content and video. So they want to be live every time. So a lot of upload will happen. So applications around that makes more sense. So the next piece comes is connectivity for machines, like you said, industries. And you know, we need to start looking at countries who have really succeeded into it. Just to give an example, uh, China is the first country around the world where connected devices on 3GPP networks, 2G, 3G, 4G, have finally crossed the number of people. That's the only country around the world where connectivity and machines have crossed. So connected to a machine is not limited to, you know, uh, telephones from, you know, windows uh, to cars. There'll be robots. There'll be, you know, in India, I can see curtain, curtain rod seller telling me, sir, take my rod. It has a connectivity with 4G. So that's the amount of connectivity we are looking at. Everything that we buy in our house, whether it's a washing machine or a TV or a scooter or a car, everything will have a SIM connected to it. And today we are talking about some IoT. Tomorrow there will be a lot of, lot of uplink and downlink into it. So in 5G we are talking about reduced capacity, red cap. That's another wave. And we are thinking that that will replace the whole connectivity of the cameras, security piece. Today for every camera that we deploy, we have to roll out a lot of cables, you know, a lot of servers to hold the data and then remote connectivity. Just imagine you have a camera connected with a SIM, everything gets uploaded onto a remote server somewhere. So just imagine the life simplicity equation. So that's another innovation which is happening in towards from IoT point of view. Uh, look at multiple industries. Today, biggest thing or I would say challenge for industry is their data security. They don't want their data from factory A to go to factory B. And that's where 5G will bring a lot of resilience and security into it. There was a, a point around latency. So latency is another way which will bring a lot of new applications. Gaming. You know, I remember when we were kids, we used to go to video gaming zone. Now people go to gaming zone with AR, VR devices. Down the line, we will have those gaming zones sitting in the houses, in the offices. Uh, there is an application running in Qatar where they sell the houses, not by showing the property on site. They sell the houses by showing the property on AR, VR devices. You go to their luxury office, they show you everything over there. So that's again a remote selling of things. So even in India, people are investing into Middle East using those technologies. So that's another piece of business coming into it. And you know, we were talking in the morning about Bangalore as a city. AI, generative AI, intent-based AI, all these things will drive more applications for the world. And to name some of them is, you know, uh, I, I know many of you would be aware about API exposures. That's the another thing which is happening that can telecom network expose APIs? Can the companies like Ericsson's of the world start talking about how can they enable telecom operators, enterprise users onto it? And that's where, you know, one of our platform is Vonage, but there are other platforms around the world where we expose the telecom APIs. And the moment you talk about exposure of telecom APIs, a lot of new applications come into play. For example, Uber. Uber around the world is on common platform. So just imagine you are sitting in any part of the country, anywhere in the world, you can use the same Uber app, need not worry how your call is getting authenticated, how your SIM is getting authenticated, how your card is getting authenticated, how do you get an SMS, you are not worried about it. How is it happening? It's all happening via the 5G. 5G has one piece of it. Many countries is happening on 4G, but that's one application which is coming into it. So the moment we talk about uh, this uh, APIs, the more and more things come into us, generative AI. There's a lot of content which is being shared and then a lot of generative AI being developed and decisions being made. And that's where we see digital twinning coming into the play. Digital twin will enable how can you design your cities, your offices, your ways of working. A lot of things will change. And that's where more and more of applications will come. So to answer your point, Sumit, I think there's a Pandora of innovations which is happening. A lot of entrepreneurs are coming into this area. And if I talk about it, for the bonus platform that I was referring to it, we have approximately 1.6 million developers around the world working with Ericsson on these platforms. So which clearly indicates there is huge amount of innovation happening and we would soon see like how these innovations turn into more and more applications. Thank you. Where there is Ericsson, how can Nokia be behind? Uh, so let me invite Arun to talk about 
what is the role of partnerships uh, in, in creating these solutions? Uh, because no one person or organization can do it alone. Absolutely right, Sumit. One uh, exciting aspect of this new generation of technology is uh, cloudification or virtualization. So in the earlier uh, technologies, let's say you wanted to connect to the internet, you had to, the traffic from your phone had to perhaps travel all the way to a central server or to a central switch, from there it would connect you to the internet. But now we have the concept of cloud RAN, where the radio access network capability can somehow be brought closer to the handset and uh, let's say you don't have to send, you don't have to set up a server, let's say in the center of Bangalore, but you can have one right here at uh, Sheraton Grand and uh, the, the network capabilities allows you that you just have to connect to the server here and you're directly there on the internet. So this gives a lot of opportunity for cloudification and uh, the masters of, of cloud are the Dells and HPs of the world. So Nokia, for example, is having partnerships with Dell to try and see can we build up cloud RAN on their, uh, you know, pro edge uh, servers of, of Dell. Sim similarly, we are working with HPE to see that can we implement the cloud RAN on their ProLiant uh, server uh, line. Now, the moment you talk of cloud, you know, there are already services like AWS, which allows you to, you know, build the cloud stack and so on. So that's another opportunity. So we are in partnership with them. One other area is how can we bring these services to enterprises? And uh, Vishy talked about, you know, through Industry 4.0 and the, these, uh, these concepts, where you can actually set up 5G for private networks, let's say within a campus, uh, within a you know within a port for example and uh, there while we while the Nokia's and Ericsson's can provide the uh, radio access network now given that there is this cloud to be taken care of there is this uh, AWS to be taken care of can a service integrator put all of them together and uh, therefore recently Nokia has tied up with Wipro to develop uh, enterprise applications so I think this is uh, uh, it's like you said one person cannot do it, but by bringing the best of both the worlds from the uh, telco players and the tech players, these are the kind of innovations that we can develop uh, uh, using 5G. Yeah, thank you. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll be asked to hurry up a little bit. Uh, Jenta, I'll ask you about the role of AI and what can AI play a role in the evolving ecosystem? So. So in uh, recent months, uh, generative AI right, has uh, taken the world by storm and there is a lot of application of uh, generative AI in, in the context of uh, 5G. So let me start with uh, you know, some low hanging, uh, so one of the low hanging fruit uh, with generative AI is to transform the customer support service. Right? And, uh, intelligent chatbots right driven by this uh, large language models will be always available on, on demand 24 by 7 and they can give you very personalized and contextual service right so this will help to ensure rapid adoption of the various services right? so this is i think one example of uh, low uh, hanging fruit then ai in general will help to automate uh, a lot of the network operations. So today if you see uh, globally, almost 80 to 85 percent of the operator's revenue is OPEX. That is, you know, just to keep the lights on. But using AI, if you are able to automate the network and make the network more and more autonomous, you are able to free up the capital to focus more on building and launching new innovative services. Some of the points for Uma and uh, Sumit touch, touched upon, right? Like being able to build platforms for network APIs, being able to build an ecosystem of developers, right? So, 
So one of the questions like earlier we touched upon was, you know, what is the killer app for 5G? Probably the answer to that is there is no killer app, right? It is going to be a long tail of a lot of services, lot of use cases. And here we have to take an example from how the hyperscalers have made them successful. The hyperscalers, the way they work is they will trial, experiment with a lot of new services. But once a service is, uh, they see it as uh, being successful, they are able to rapidly scale up. So using AI, making the network autonomous will give you the flexibility and the agility to launch and experiment with a lot of new services and one of them will be successful, right? And then you are able to rapidly scale up uh, the services because of an autonomous network, right? Then the last point I want to touch upon, we are now in the era of 5G, but slowly we are moving into 5G advanced and into uh, 6G. Now 6G will bring certain capabilities, like for the first time in 6G we will have uh, uh, AI native, uh, native air interface. It will have intelligent sensing. So this will bring in a lot of new capabilities. Uh, and use cases like, you know, metaverse uh, and uh, other use cases, autonomous vehicle will become a, a reality because of this AI driven approach. So there are a lot of exciting use cases that are possible once you integrate AI into the network. Great. So Jayanta says there is no killer app. There is going to be a lot of a long tail of apps. So let me turn it over to Vishi to talk about how can entrepreneurs and startups take advantage of the evolving 5G ecosystem. Uh, what can, what can, how can we sustain innovation? Thanks, Omid. <coughs> Essentially, till about the earlier generation, say the 4G, uh, the network happened to be a black box, you know, um, and it is a best effort basis. Uh, you have a connectivity and you get a best effort basis connectivity. You don't know what is actually happening inside the network. Uh, you take a SIM and then you connect it and, and things work or things don't work. One of the good things that 5G has done is uh, expose the network. You know, there are more than one ways. One, uh, the network itself has come closer to uh, compute. If you have skills in compute, you have skills in software, you have skills in hardware, uh, you are able to get closer to the network. Second thing is the network getting exposed as a bunch of APIs. So the network, imagine network as a software, you know. So that's what 5G has done uh, to this network. Hence, um, the entrepreneurs so, uh, have a lot of opportunities which come around it. Let me, let me explain. The network infrastructure in itself, uh, you know, it is a heavy investment and heavy lifting thing. You know, let us leave it to the Ericsson's, Nokia's, Tejas and HFCL's of the world, you know. But if you are an entrepreneur, the better thing to do would be to look at how to use the exposure from the network and try and derive uh, advantage out of it. So things, if you are in hardware, if you want to get into the hardware, there are a lot of native 5G native devices that are required. The device ecosystem is just begun. There is a long way to go to make uh, you know 5G native devices which are useful for enterprises to set up their automation, to set up their applications. And these devices could be high bandwidth, uh, you know, devices like 5G native uh, HD cameras, or on the other extreme, you could have sensors which are 5G native. So there is a lot of work that needs to be done in 5G native device ecosystem for automation, for industry 4.0, uh, and a lot of other applications. The second thing, if you are deep into software, there are lots of applications that <laughs> enterprises are looking into to make it into a successful deployment of 5G. So there is a lot of opportunity to look at use cases that can be developed on top of a 5G network, leveraging the 5G uh, you know, nativity and the 5G APIs for you to develop. Uh, it could be for various applications like, uh, you know, uh, industrial automation. It could be around mobility. It could be around robotics. It could be around connective machinery. 
connected machinery. So there are lots of uh, you know opportunities which are there to build use cases for enterprises to leverage using 5G as the uh, basic enabler. So in my view, 5G opens up a lot of opportunities uh, for compute and network to come together uh, to solve a lot of issues that enterprises have in their digitalization. Thank you. Um, our aim here was to increase your, you know, George to sort of participate in 5G, uh, build businesses that, that rely on 5G so that we can build a better India. And let me, last but not the least, turn it over to Pritam um, to talk about is there a future where the India stack itself goes global? And we see the India 5G stack and along with it the businesses that you create uh, go global. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think. Uh, uh, so, uh, we have come a long way, I mean, from, from where we started many years ago. Uh, but the opportunities today are defined not just by the 5G's technology uh, which enables a lot of uh, new uh, use cases and you know, applications to be developed. Obviously, there is there are a lot of opportunities like Vishi and uh, uh, Umang and everyone said. Uh, but apart from that, I think uh, just on the 5, you know, 4G or 5G stack side, uh, even on the hardware and, and on the infrastructure side, the world is opening up for for a new player in the in the world, right? Because because of the geopolitical reasons, a lot of mistrust and distrust is there among countries, and they are looking for a solution from a you know friendly country who can be trusted for security of their uh, you know internal infrastructure, which is communication infrastructure is the biggest uh, you know uh, uh, infrastructure they most of the countries you know. Uh, deploy and that is more vulnerable for security threats and because of that there is definitely huge scope we have also seen i mean i talked to most operators uh, you know europe or us or anywhere in the world they all are looking for uh, indian company to come there and and actually provide them a, a, a world class solution because they they trust uh, uh, india mainly uh, compared to some other countries that uh, they have been doing business with so there is a lot of opportunity. Apart from that, definitely, you know, there is a world of opportunities for the rest of the ecosystem, including the apps and the devices. Uh, I mean, uh, I think the opportunity is so huge, uh, from 5G all the way to 6G, uh, because of the paradigm shift, shift this technology has opened up. You know, 4G was more about mobile networks for the operator. 5G is more about enterprise applications and other use cases. So applications, devices, hardware, software, both, uh, everywhere there are opportunities uh, to go through. So uh, let's, let's wrap up. I think, uh, you know, if you're looking for your next business idea, then think 5G and you will see green dollars there. Thank you so much and, uh, and it was a pleasure. Thank you.